Happy Sabbath, everyone. And to God be the glory of great things he has done. We want to say a special welcome to our online viewers, those who are viewing us via live stream, YouTube or Facebook. We say a pleasant welcome. Go ahead now and do your missionary activity. Please copy this link and please share this link with your friends, those whom you think may be benefited by this morning. So we're going to have a word of prayer. Do we all have a study guide? All right, we all need one, right? And we're going to move right into this evening's, this morning's study. Let us, let us pray. <clears throat> O oh God of mercy and compassion, we beseech thy throne this morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks that we have the opportunity to assemble to worship you unmolested. We pray now that you will send us your Holy Spirit, and may he enlighten our understanding, may he bring conviction this morning, is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, we are continuing our series, 1844, re-examined and reaffirmed, and we are on lesson number 7B, the Feast of Trumpets. Now, each feast, we know, has approximately six or seven studies. This may have about eight. It's a very explosive feast, and we want to milk it as much as we can. Friends, our objective is to get to this date, 1844, right? And in a few days... We would have gone over about 100 and what? 70-ish, close to 80, 78 years since this date. A very important date in the history of Adventism. And every Seventh-day Adventist should know what cluster this date. Amen? Now, there are some books we have been promoting for this series. Good books, kosher books, organic books you, you need to get written by our pioneers. These books will help you to understand the sanctuary in its entirety and how the practical lessons. And one of my favorites of all times is The Cross and the Shadow by Stephen and Haskell. We covered him on our trailblazer. He wrote this when he was in his 90s. Yeah, the average person in, in, in America is a 90, is in a veggie state. But his faculties were firing on all four cylinders. And it goes back to what we put in, amen? Um, he did believe in a plant-based diet, and you can see the fruit of his labor. I'm just trying to get a, get a, get a book, <laughs> book done, but... In his late 80s, early 90s, he wrote this book, wonderful book, right? Then we have the Great Controversy. These chapters, again, friends, they do magnify the sanctuary, an important doctrine within our faith. And then we are still promoting these books, the feast days. We have a few copies, so if you'd like to get one for yourself, please see us. Now, how many feast days were there? Seven. How many in the spring? Four. How many in the fall? Three. All right, so friends, we had Passover, um, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, and now we're in the fall, trumpets, day of atonement, and we had tabernacles. Now, as we approach these feasts, any subject you study, you must approach from three perspectives. One, historically, right? We're not Jews, we're Gentiles, right? This is a Jewish book in, some, in, in, in its context. These feasts were Jewish. So to really understand it, we must go Jewish, right? And so we're going to be on the historical for about three or four lessons. Then we can't stop there. Christocentrically, how did Christ fulfill this? Yeah? And then practically, what personal changes or adjustments will I make in my life to make this a reality? Dr. King once said we don't want to have a high anemic um, um, in, in, in creeds and high blood pressure in creeds and be anemic in deeds. So it's not just having a head knowledge. We want to have a heart transformation. We want to see Jesus. Amen? Now, again, we've said there are great value in these feasts because they offer insights in the plan of salvation, in the plan of redemption. Now, our text, you will find these feasts, and this is a revision, we find these feasts in Leviticus 23. Moses wrote, now the Lord speak unto Moses saying, speak unto who? On the seventh month of the first day of that month, there shall be a Sabbath, a moral of the blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation, do no servile work therein, offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, we're reviewing from the last lesson, right? <clears throat> we recognize that the Feast of Trumpet was celebrated on the first of, day of the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, which was in the month of Tishri. You got to get this. We're going Hebrew. Tishri, which corresponds to our calendar 
in the months of September and what? Now, friends, it is so true because a couple of days ago, they had Yom Kippur. And before that, Rosh Hashan, which was the Feast of Friends. This thing is real. This is not a figment of my imagination. It is as real as it knows on your face. Right? Now, and I said this, and I mean it, I believe with all my heart and soul and mind that when tabernacle comes to fruition, that's the coming of Jesus, it must take place in October. It has to. Now, I can't give you the date or the time. We're not setting dates, but the seasons, because all these feasts had a season. And if we've been right thus far, what do you think we will we, we, we'll guess when tabernacle comes? Right? Now, and again, now, when we look at these feasts now, the first four feasts, let me go forward, deal with his first advent. The last three deals with his second coming. That's how you put them in their perspective right now. We left off and we gave you a chart. We showed you the Hebrew calendar. It wasn't January or February. It was Nisan was the first month. In the first month, Nisan corresponds with our April, March and April. Jesus died between March and April, the Passover, right? And there were three feasts that were celebrated, right? Look at them now. 5th, 14th, um, Passover, 50, 11 bread, 16th um, was the uh, first fruits. Then we had now the, um, there they are now. Then we had Sivan, was the third month of the Jewish calendar. This correlates with May and June. In Sivan, we had the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, 50 days after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, our first fruits, right? Then we come now down to, um, where am I now? Let me open up to Tishri. Tishri corresponds with our uh, September and October, and the last three feasts were fulfilled in Tishri, which corresponds to our October. The first was the trumpets. Yeah? Second, the tenth was the atonement, which we are in, anti-type. And the last was tabernacle. And friends, tabernacle, we get not a dodge. The jig is up. This is real. This is not no joke. And there was a time when every seventh heaven knew this. Today, God bless what we know. Now, we realize that there was a three-month interval, and this is where Israel got themselves into trouble. A long break. You go on vacation. Put on a little weight. Talk to me now, eh? Get back to work. Now, you have to get the cobwebs out. And so within these three months, the harvest, Israel had gone rogue. Israel was a sinful people, right? There was a suffering people. There were a sick people, and there were a slothful, and there were also a scattered people. And the only instrument that could arrest their attention was the trumpet. And for some of us, only trouble will arrest us. He has to bring us low for us to look up. I see because we, we are a hard-headed people, brothers and sisters. I don't know why. Now, we're picking up now, right where we left off. Take your handouts, friends. We're filling in the blanks, right? So please write fast and listen fast. Now, question number one says now, when Abraham saw the ram, what was caught? What was he caught by? Now, we're laying a foundation now. Genesis 22, 13. The Bible says, now, Abraham was about to strike the juggler vein of his son. And what, a, what an obedient child, man. You know, when, when, when back in the days when we were getting spanked, murderation, you know, Jamaican, we have a heavy hand. And nobody stood around to get spanking. No child in their right mind. You gonna run. And when you're getting the lick, you, 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 you're doing that. Huh? But this grown man laid down to have his father take his life. Lord, have mercy. What an obedient child. All of a sudden now, a cry came. Watch it now. Verse 13 says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a what? Not a sheep, a ram, underscore, caught in the thicket by his what? It's horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. We're on the feast of trumpets. So fill it in now. It was caught in the thicket by its horn. Who put it there? It had to be God. Now, friends, watch it now. I like what Spurgeon said. The text said Abraham 
lifted up his eyes. So where was his face all along? Down. Down. Now, Spurgeon said this so profound. Here is another type of the Savior's great sacrifice on Calvary. The ram offered in the place of, in the place of Jesus. How often do you and I have our great substitute very near to us, yet we do not see him because we do not lift up our eyes and look up. Like the man in John Bunyan's The Muckrake, he was scraping, scraping all along. There was a crown, and he would not lift up his head. We need to look up and stay looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. Now watch this now. A ram caught in the thickest by its horn. Question number two now. Now what instrument, what wind instrument was birthed out of this situation? Let's think Jewish now. The, out of this ram caught by its horn in the thicket, the Jews now birthed a powerful wind instrument. Philip, it was called the ram's horn or the shofar. We're going Jewish now. The shofar. Today it is known by the shofar. When you, you cannot really appreciate the feast of trumpets without the shofar. It was a wind instrument. Now, remember I said for there are some books that we do quote from because they, they, were, they are Jewish in their origin. Very good books because they do give us an insight in the day-to-day -day activity of the Jewish culture. And friends, you've got to go Jewish before you go Gentile. We must do our historical work. So for these three or four lessons, we're going to be deeply in the historical. Then we're going to transition to the contemporary. Yeah? Now I'm reading from a good book. It's called the Complete Jewish Study Bible, the Mishnah. Look what it said. Please read now. The Hebrew word of what? The Hebrew word shofar means a horn for blowing. Uh -huh. it, is, it is a ram's horn trumpet used by ancient Jews in religious ceremonies and as a battle signal. All right. It was a horn that could be blown by the priests or the people of Israel. Uh -huh. It is still used now, sounded at Rosh, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets today, and Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. So even today, the Jews still use the shofar to signal. Yeah? Now watch it now. This is what it looked like. It was a ram's horn, a wind instrument. Very, very important in understanding the Feast of Trumpets. One more, this is a good book to get, man. It's by Glacier, uh, um, um, and uh, Glacier is called the Fall Feast of Israel. The Mitch and Glacier, they're, they're Jewish, and they focus on the Fall Feast. Very, very explosive. A good book to get in your auxiliary. Look what they say. Please read our traditionally. Traditionally, the sound of the shofar has been a memorial for the Jewish people of God's faithfulness to Abraham. Uh -huh. The ram's horn reminds us of Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac and God's provision of a ram as a substitute. So we see salvation in the ram's horn. When they blew the ram's horn, it reminded them, Abraham, I know it's not you fear me. And that, lamb was, that ram was a substitute for what Jesus Christ would do for us on Calvary, yeah? So we can see salvation tied to this instrument, yet they missed the Messiah. Yet they rejected Jesus. Lord have mercy. Now, one more good book we've been using, celebrating, the, uh, celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feast by Dr. Richard Booker. Please read now again. Again, <coughs> the shofar was blown in remembrance of the ram that was sacrificed in place of Isaac. So over and over, when you think the shofar, you think the ram. The shofar was as a wind instrument, which they blew. Now, over time, David coined the phrase, we've heard it, the horn of salvation. We see it. Where did he get this from? As a matter of fact, did you know that in the, in, 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 in the holy place, there were four horns? And when you grab hold of those horns, you were, nobody could kill you. But you asked one of those kings in Israel. One of them, I forgot, he, he broke protocol. Salvation means deliverance. I'm safe. I'm free. 
So David now, in his writings, as a matter of fact, we find it in Psalms 118, Psalms 18, verse 3. David says now, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my what? Making a reference to the ram caught in the thicket. You see, friends, the book says, now please read now, continuing the shofar. The shofar was created for the welfare of Israel. Uh -huh. The Torah was given to Israel with the sound of the shofar. Uh -huh. Israel conquered in the battle of Jericho with the blast of the shofar. All right. Israel would be advised of the advent of the Messiah with the sound of the shofar. Uh -huh. And the Holy One, blessed be he, will sound the shofar at the time of the ingathering mm. of the exiles of Israel to their place. Now let me jump the gun. We're going to generalize, but I'm going to hone this down. When the shofar blew in Israel, I'm going to focus on four major things. It was a time to worship, a time for war, a time to work, and a time to regather. Because they were scattered. That's where we're heading. We have lectures on all these four points. Very explosive. So again, the ram's horn refers to the shofar. Now, as time progressed and they became more established as a people. Question three now. In addition to the shofar, what other wind instrument was used in Israel? Numbers 10. The Bible says now. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Make the, how many trumpets? Two, underscore two, not one. Two trumpets of sterling silver of a whole piece that thou make them and thou mayst use them for the calling of the what? Assembly and for the journey of the camp. So next to the shofar, the next wind instrument that was used in Israel was the two silver trumpets two silver trumpets so we have the shofar the ram's horn and then we have the two silver trumpets two as a matter of fact these are the only two instruments that were used wind in israel in the context of israel day-to-day -day life my friends you got to get this you have to get this today please read now the trumpet the trumpet. Or the, and I, this Greek word, the Hebrew word, Greek word, Hebrew. I tried, I got it, but then it slipped my mind. You know, I, I, I don't want to curse, right? <laughs> the shofar I got, but this one, you work with it, right? Go ahead uh, now. Chatsat. Yeah, chatara. <laughs> yeah. Though it falls within the same category as a wind instrument, it differed greatly from the shofar, uh -huh. which was made from an actual curved ram's horn. All right. The trumpet was a straight metallic, which was made of silver. All right. Please read now. The trumpet. The trumpets were initially made to be blown exclusively by the priests. Friends, you got to get this. The priests were, the, they were the ones who could exclusively or should blow the trumpet. Right? Uh, 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 the, however, the shofar could be blown by the priest or any people in Israel. Get that point now. The silver horns uh, were blown by the priest twice daily during the morning and evening sacrifice, several times on the Sabbath when the sacrifice were offered and during the pilgrim's festival, the feast. Going back to celebrate in the Jewish feast, now Booker said, please read now, God used? God used trumpets in the Hebrew Bible as a means of communicating with his covenant people. Today we communicate through what? Talk to me, how? No, we don't know we, we, how we communicate to, to people. No, we don't oral. No, we text. You be in the car, you're in the front, and she's texting you. You're in one, one room, you know, and we text. So we text and we, we text and text some more. Back then, the trumpet was God's texting. That was his mojo made of communicating. Did you get that, friends? What Texan is today, the trumpet was yesterday. Please read now. God? God could not speak directly to the people without terrifying them. Uh huh. So he spoke to them indirectly through the use of trumpets. Yes. To the Hebrews, the sound of the trumpet represented both the voice of God uh -huh. and the might of God in warfare. Friends, you got to get this. 
And every Jew understood the trumpet. It would almost be a crime or a criminal offense to live in Israel and not know the various temper of the trumpets, right? Booker says now the silver trumpets were? Made from the same source of silver. All right. They were blown to assemble the people to worship, uh -huh. to break camp, uh -huh. and as an alarm in preparation for battle. You gotta get that, friends. Please read now a good what? Summary of how the trumpets were used is provided in the 10th chapter of the book of Numbers. And we're going to cover that. Now, my favorite, Alfred Edishim. Friends, yeah, I tell you, boy, you, <laughs> one of the most, the, the most ablest Jewish scholar. You don't get no better than Edishim. Inspiration relied heavily on Edishim because he was so accurate. He comments on this in his book, The Bible History, a good book to get, friends. I encourage you to get all of his books that we, that we, were, we are promoting, right? Look what he said. This is so profound. Please read now the direction. The direction, either for marching or for resting, was given by the cloud inhabited by the divine presence. Watch it now. For the actual signal to move, uh -huh. two silver trumpets were to be used by the sons of Aaron. So you don't move on his trumpets to move. Yeah? Please read now. A prolonged alarm indicated the commencement of the march. Prolonged alarm. Yeah? Now you know your alarm clock has different alarm. You have that pa 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 Or you have that pa You have that beep, beep, based on how you want to get up. Please read now. Go ahead now. At the first alarm, the eastern. At the second, the southern part of All the right. camp was to move forward. Uh -huh. Then came the tabernacle and its custodians. Yes. The western, and finally, the northern part of the camp. Naphtali closed in the rear. So, friends, you see how important the trumpet was? They had to understand the lingo of the trumpet. And I'm going to show you, fair to do that meant you, you could be killed. You see, we're told, friends, two things Satan took with him when he left heaven. We only focus on one. He took one third. We know that. But he also took the power of order, the power of organization. If you think demons are helter-skelter, see, we are helter-skelter. We are told order is heaven's first law. And so the trumpet brought order and regulation. They marched together. They ate together. They slept together. Yeah? They worked together. They worshipped together. They wore together. It was the trumpet that regulated their very being. And to break rank meant you, you, could, lose, you could lose your life. I'm going to show you. And friends, I'm going to tell you something. If we are unprepared for the second of Jesus... Or the crisis is because of our failure to be regulated by the trumpet. Look what he said now. Please read. On the other hand, when an assembly of the people was summoned, the signal was only one blast. One blast. Get it now. Different signaling, right? Uh huh. Of the trumpets in short, sharp tones. Sharp, short tones. Not a prolonged, different. Please read now. In general? In general, and for all times, the blast of these silver trumpets, whether in war, on festive, or on joyous occasions, had this spiritual meaning. Yes. You shall be remembered before Yahweh your God. Uh-huh. In other words, Israel was a host, and as such summoned by blast of trumpet. Mercy. But Israel was a host of which Yahweh was leader and king. Yes. And the trumpets that summoned this host were silver trumpets of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. blown by the priests of Yahweh. Yes. Hence, their blast brought Israel as the Lord's host in remembrance before their God and king. Friends, we're looking at the Feast of Trumpets. That was what gave birth to our church, you know. I'm going to show you. Now, question four now. Why, why two silver, why two trumpets and why silver? Have you ever wondered why? See, I ask questions, you know. Why, why not three? Why two? Why two loaves? We covered that. Now, this is a principle I gather from that now. 
God wants to teach us something. Why two silver trumpets? Here it is now. Principle. We learned this. We covered this in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right? The number two in the Bible represents witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses go out two by two. Two trumpets is a witness, brothers and sisters. A witness. And what's the principle? We learned this in Bible times. No one person could bring an accusation against anybody. If you're going to be acquitted or found guilty, you need, you need two, two witnesses. witnesses. Jesus, Jesus says in the mouth of two, two or three, three one. one. Let, Let any and everything, everything be established. Right? right? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 9 is Moses says now. And, and Christ, Christ was called Moses. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity. So no one person could say, say no, you know, you know, you know, in touch me, she touch me, in Israel. No, no, it didn't work like that. We have, we have to have another witness. Yeah? yeah? Watch, Watch it, it now. Or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be what? Established. And that's that's why I keep on telling you that, that, that there's no one pastor who can silence anybody in the church. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not communism. It's Christianity. You must have, have witnesses to correlate or to affirm what he's saying. saying. It's a safeguard for us in the church with, with, with our rights. Now watch, watch it now. Now there are two trumpets. trumpets. Now this, this tells, tells me that when, when this, this is fulfilled, fulfilled in high time, high time God, God will have, have multiple people sounding this trumpet all, all around the world. And so, and so I'm jumping the gun now. We know, we know that anti type was the right right now. Have you, Have you ever, ever wondered, wondered why what? and how William Miller, Josiah Lich, Manuel Lukanza, who took the name Rabbi Ben Ezra, why Ezra? And also Joseph Wolf, these four men at the same time came to the same conclusion yeah. about, about 1914. And, and almost universally, they, they began, began to hurl it all over the world. This, this was, was the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets. I'm going to show you. And by, and by the way, we're going, we're going to, to detail, detail every aspect of William Miller's life, Josiah Lich, Manuel Lacanza, and Dr. Joseph Wolf. You see, two trumpets, a multiplicity of people, many, many witnesses, witnesses to this, to this grand, grand and glorious event. event. Now I'm, now I'm giving you the anti-type. I'm going to back up. And we're going to qualify, we're going to qualify all, all these men. men. In the, in the end of time. By the, By the way, way FYI, FYI, the trumpets, trumpets were blown 10 days, ten days in the day of the right? right? William, William Miller, Miller by his license to preach in, in 1834. 1834. Day for a year. The day of the came in 18... 18, 18, 18 you see, you see the, the parallels. I'm going to show you. Ten, ten years later, day, day for, for a year. It's amazing how it fits. And friends, there was a time where every Adventist knew this. Today, Today, God, God was what we know. So, so two was, was for witness, witness but, but also why silver? Why, why not gold? And it dawned on me. Some, some people, people like, like silver, yeah? yeah? Some, some like, like gold. <laughs> but, but why, why silver? silver? This is it. This is it now. Remember, Remember we said, said the ram's horn was, was tied to salvation. salvation. So, so we, we must be able to tie the silver, silver to so salvation. salvation. Now we, now we know it's because of the Bible. Bible. Judas, Judas 30, 30 pieces of what? All right. All right. But here is, here is something we're important now. Right? Right? Fill it in now. Silver was in connection, connection with redemption. Hmm. When you think redemption, you think silver. Now, watch it now. Watch it now. How did I get this? You know, we read the text all the time, but we don't focus on it. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18. Let's, Let's see what the text is not, not saying what the text is saying. Peter, Peter said this now. For, For as much as, as you know, you, you were, were not redeemed 
with these prophecies, prophecies as, as one. From, from your vain, vain conversations, but with the what? Precious blood of what? Of Christ, as a lamb without what? Or what? Now, what is Peter saying now, Brother Foot? What is Peter saying? Is Peter saying that silver and gold never redeemed anybody in Bible times? Look at the text. Look at the text. Is he saying, saying that silver and gold never, never redeemed anybody? anybody? Yeah. No, he's, no, he's not, not saying that. that. He's, he's saying, saying for this particular redemption, silver and gold can't redeem. You see, he said, you were not redeemed with comfortable things. So Peter knew that silver and gold could redeem a person, could buy a slave. And by the way, did you know that, are we good? No, I mean, I'm not. Are you all right? Did you know that the price of a slave was 30 pieces of silver? That's, That's why they sold the price of 30 pieces of silver. In ancient times, slaves could be redeemed with silver and gold. Yes. But in this particular situation, silver and gold could not redeem you. So silver is tied to redemption. You see the principle? You see the principle? Silver is tied to redemption. Right? No, fill it in now. The blowing of two silver trumpets provided to witness to the world that the blood of Jesus would pay the price of redemption. And all that believe thus allowing the Jew and the Gentile to become one in Christ. Remember, both trumpets can symbolize the two nations come together one. Bringing them together. A oneness. They were made of one material. One silver made two trumpets. You see the typology of Christ in this, friends. It was the same. So with Christ, we are now united. And by the way, in ancient times, if you weren't a Jew, you were a Gentile. And today, there are only two classes of people in the world today. Jews and Gentiles mean those who are right and those who are wrong. Those who are worshiping God correctly and those who worship him incorrectly. Only two classes of people in the world today, brothers and sisters. Only two classes of people. So why silver? Redemption. Why two? This would be a witness. I'm going to have many witnesses do, blowing the trumpets at the same time simultaneously. Now watch this now. Question number five now. Now, there were, there were three types of sounds that was made by the shofar and the trumpet. What are they? Now you got to get this now. There was the first, fill it in now, there was a long, continuous blast. And when they heard that, it meant something. It meant something in the Jewish culture. Today, we're Gentile. It means nothing to us. But for every Jew, that meant something. Yeah? Where do you find that? It's in the Bible, you know. Go to Joshua 6, 5. It says now, And it shall come to pass that when you shall make a long blast with the ram's horn, the shofar, different sound. You see, Exodus 19, 13 says, when the trumpet shall sound long, deep breath, blow it long, it meant something. I'm going to qualify that in upcoming studies. Now, the next one was, there was a short, abrupt blast. Short, pop, 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 pop. For us, that, that meant noise. But for any Jew, you hear that? What do you have on? You know, hear the bro. Huh? Huh? Better take that off. You know what that mean? Do you know what that meant? See, the Jews knew that, you know. That's why God gave them 10 days to get themselves together for the Day of Atonement. If they showed up, with those things in their ears, 
in them nose, round them necks, they were cut off. As it was in the type, so will it be in the anti-type. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered why Seven Heavens don't wear jewelry? You, you ever wonder why we don't? Friends, you've got to go back to the trumpets and the Day of Atonement. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why we shouldn't put it on, why we shouldn't put it on. Any man have it on? Whoa. Woe unto that man. I'm going to show you. And this is no works. This is, what, this is what Jesus says. Right? So we had a short abrupt blast. Here it is now. When thou shalt blow an alarm. Short. Brock. Right? And then we had now. This one is serious now. So we had a long continuous blast. A short abrupt blast. Third, if you it now. There was a short blast produced by a vibration. <laughs> Your whole body will vibrate. <laughs> yeah? With the tongue together with a continuous blowing. They were not all blown the same way. And they all meant something in Israel. Yeah? Now, you say not you are exaggerating. I wish I was. In Gospel Workers, the title is called Gospel Order. And Ellen White now borrows these vibrations and she expound upon the movements of Israel and their dec what decorum they should possess when these were, were blown. Friends, we are in the historical this morning. Look what she says. Please read now. When the ark... When the ark moved, the armies journeyed, the different tribes marching in order under their own standards. Per get this now, purple words now, uh-huh. The Levites were designated by the Lord as the tribe in the midst of whom the sacred ark was to be born. All right. Moses and Aaron marching just in front of the ark, and the sons of Aaron following near them, each bearing a trumpet. Watch it now. They were to receive directions from Moses, which they were to signify to the people by speaking through the trumpets. Oh, the language. Trumpet language. That was the texting. Yeah? The email. Did you get the memo? Yes, I heard it. Watch it now. She says now, these what? These trumpets gave special sounds. Stop. Not a sound. But special sounds focus on the S. Plural. Yeah? Please read now. Which the people understood. Oh, they knew this. It was taught in Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. AY. Pathfinder. Camp meeting, mm. board meeting, mm. elders training, deacons training, pastoral study. Oh, you, you, you knew this. The baby knew it. Mm. Everybody knew it. It was the way of life in Israel. Yeah? Please read now. And they directed their movements accordingly. Uh-huh. So you know when to march? Know when to weep? Know when to repent? <laughs> it regulated the whole being. Please read now. A special signal was first given by the trumpets to call the attention of the people. Attention. Sit up. Straighten up. Look up. Yeah? Please read now. Then all were to be attentive. Watch it now. And obey the certain sound of the trumpets. Uh -huh. There was no confusion of sound in the voices of the trumpets. Oh, no, 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 no. Today in the church, friends, it is so sad. And I tell people this, people, young people are leaving the church. Why do they leave? Not because of a straight message. They leave because of incertitude. That's a big word. It means what we say is not what we're living. Friends, we have about 15 churches within a 50 mile radius within this proximity. And friends, I guarantee, you go and ask them one point on position. You'll get 15 different answers. And you're reading from the same book. Under the same general conference. Now who's right? There was no ambiguous movement, brothers. And it should not be. There was no confusion over our position on doctrine. It should not be. Please read now. Therefore, there was no excuse for condition and movements, for confusion and movements. You hear that? No excuse. Please read now. 
the head officer of each company gave definite directions in regard to the movements they were required to make. Uh -huh. And none who gave attention were left in ignorance of what they were to do. Wow. Trumpets now. Please read now. She says now, if any. If any failed to comply with the requirements given by the Lord to Moses and by Moses to the people, they were punished with death. You hear that? Mm. Friends, did you hear that today? Some of you will say that's, that, 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 that's hate speech. They were punished by death. What is death? Cessation of life. <laughs> that's what it is. And they will get up and burn. That's a double whammy. If you didn't understand the trump, you had no excuse, brother. And friends, there is no excuse today for not knowing God's, God's requirement. I know we say, well, me not a good pastor. Me know, but you can read. You got books, you got Kindle, you got all kinds of devices. You can read and edify yourself. None will be without excuse, brothers and sisters. None. None. You can read the whole thing well, at your leisure, right? But points, you can see the trumpets regulated the whole movement of Israel. Now, lest I stand here and generalize now, I'm almost finished. There are 10 biblical historical facts we should know about the shofar and the trumpet. Now, this will set our stage for upcoming lectures. You got to get this, friends. We're doing historical. Ten facts you must know. Number one, fill it in now. It, now, it can be either trumpet or shofar, right? When I say it, it means either or, right? It was blown when the law was given. The Ten Commandments was given by God, by Jesus to Moses. The trumpet or the shofar was sounded. It was there. Where do you find it? Exodus 19, 16 says now. And there was uh, uh, the voice of a trumpet. There it is now. You see? And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, it was present when Moses got the Ten Commandments from God. Right? Number two. It was blown at the fall of Jericho when the walls came down. Do not underestimate the power, the pathos of the shofar or the trumpet. Very, very important. Very important. Where do you find that? Joshua chapter 6, verse number 4 says now, seven priests, seven is God's number. You see? Seven is God's number. Yeah? Seven priests shall bear the ark before the seven trumpets of the ram's horn, the shofar. And the seventh day... He shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Right? And he, she said, Moses says now, and it shall come to pass when Joshua spake unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horn, Jericho came down. Look what she said now. From eternity past. Please read now. She says, the vast army. The vast army marched solemnly around the walls. Uh-huh. All was silent, yes. save the measured tread of many feet. Mercy. The watchers on the walls looked on with rising fear. Uh -huh. As the first circuit ended, there followed a second, yes. then a third, uh -huh. a fourth, uh -huh. a fifth, uh -huh. and a sixth. Uh -huh. What could be the object of these mysterious movements? They had not long to wait. As the seventh circuit was completed, Mercy. the long procession paused. And then she says, now, the trumpets which for an interval had been silent, I love this, now broke forth in a blast that shook the very earth, brothers and sisters. The whole earth vibrated. And all them steel that they had in them walls, and cement and gravel and pockets that were poured, talk to me now. That could not withstand the ram blast of the shofar. Amen. Amen. It brought them things down. Amen. Powerful instrument. Number three. It was used by Gideon to cause confusion in the camps of Midianites. It confused the whole camp. The shofar, the ram's horn. Powerful. Judges 7, 16, the Bible says, and he divided 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with a pitch, with empty pitchers and lambs and with pitchers. The ram's horn, a trumpet and a pitcher. 
And look what happened when they blew now. Same book, please read now, by divine direction. By divine direction, a plan of attack was suggested. Yes. The 300 men were divided into three companies. Uh -huh. To every man was given a trumpet and a torch concealed in an earthen pitcher. Yes. The men were stationed in such a manner as to approach the Midianite camp from different directions. Uh -huh. In the dead of night, at a signal from Gideon's war horn, the three companies sounded their trumpets. When I think of this, I remember what Paul says. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Then she says, the break, then the what, the breaking? Breaking their pitchers and displaying the blazing torches, they rushed upon the enemy with a terrible war cry, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Uh -huh. The sleeping army was suddenly aroused. Yes. Upon every side was seen the light of flame and torches. Uh -huh. In every direction was heard the sound of trumpets with the cry of the assailants. Believing themselves at the mercy of an overwhelming force, yes. the Midianites were panic-stricken. Uh -huh. With wild cries of alarm, they fled for life, and mistaking their own companions for enemies, they slew one another. Wow. The shofar did that. The ram's horn. The blast. Fourth about the shofar now and the, the trumpet. It was used as a call to war or a warning of war. This was one of the most common usage. Friends, we're going to expound upon this because the greatest war is about to take place. And the dragon was wroth, was mad, was angry, was enraged, and went to make war. And so God is now preparing a people to meet the dragon. And what will he use? The ram's blast or the trumpet to prepare ourselves. And friends, if you and I are unprepared in this coming crisis, whether physically or spiritually, it's because your hear was dull to the sound of the ram blast or the trumpet. For war, how do I know this? Judges 3.27 says now, and it came to pass when they came up, they blew the trumpet. And the mountain of Ephraim, what happened now? And they slew Moab. A call to war. Fifthly, it was used as a call for cessation of war. Stop the fighting. Yeah. If there's ever a time in the history of the world where families should be on the same theological page it is now. If there's ever a time where we need to cease the war in the homes, husbands and wives, children and parents, the time is now. If there's ever a time that we should be on the same page in the church, it is now. Let's cease the strifing. Cease the bickering. Friends, you think you have problems? You don't know what problems are. There is serious trouble coming. It's time for us now to unite the world is against us. The churches are against us. The dragon, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are all against us. Should not there be unity now within our ranks? It should be in the church, but in some cases we are so we are at war. You want to see war? Go in board meeting. You go in a board meeting. You go in a business meeting. You see, we're war tree. <laughs> yeah? Second Samuel 2 Samuel 2.20 says now, so Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people stood still and paused. After Israel, no more neither fought anymore. Stop the fighting. Why? Because the trumpet blew. You see that principle now, right? Sixthly, it was used in the anointing and the accession of a new king on the throne. Friends, you cannot... Be, you cannot go through the Bible and the sanctuary and not be familiar with the trumpets and the shofar. Yeah? Did I skip one? I did? All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Right? Number seven. Where's my number seven? All right. It was used as a way of praise. We got that? Yeah? Okay. 
certain feast. Okay, let me, let me, okay. I'll give you that one. Just work with me. I knew I made a mistake in it, but so it goes sometime, eh? All right, number eight now. It was used as a call to repentance. You find that one? All right, good, okay. I'll give you the rest. Don't worry about it, right? It was used as a call to So when you heard the shofar or the trumpet, if you are in any sin, big sin, little sin, did you hear that? Oh God, I forgot to stop teeth, you know. <laughs> Why? You don't hear that? You are going like a death. You hear that? No, sir. Never, never leave. We're gone in my yard. <laughs> you have to. Go back to the book. He said, it's so profound. Look what she says now. Please read now. The ceremony of the blowing of the shofar during the time of the Messiah was magnificent to see and experience. Uh huh. The priest chosen to blow the shofar was trained for his calling since youth. Woo! He was an artist and virtuoso of sacred song. Did you get it, friends? This man, when he pressed that thing to his lips, he wasn't a novice. He didn't just show up on Sabbath and do a thing. That is why the Levites were paid in the sanctuary. See, we love free too much, and that's the problem with us, you know. And I, listen, is until you go to Oakwood and you understand that children who come to Oakwood study music. It's a degree, you know. I had one, one guy in my, we were sweet mates. He majored in music. And I, 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 I saw days when he couldn't clear financially. And you want the man to go to Oakwood and struggle and come to your church complete for free. Shame on you. Shame. They were paid, you know. And I've learned this, you know. When a man works for free, him come and he want to come and leave. When money's involved, it's accountability. It's professionalism. The Levites were paid. And I've realized our church is your only church that don't pay musicians rightly. These other churches out there in Babylon, it's a full thing. And it's not like we don't have the money. The Levites were paid. They were paid by the tithe. Now look at free something. You go up on the piano, bang, 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 and you come. You don't know what you're playing. And you can't talk too hard because she, she, she free. You go too hard, she ain't coming back. No, brother, you're under a contract. That's why I believe it, friends. I am a firm believer we should respect our musicians. Now, if a man wants to play for free, that's his prerogative. But put a little thing, put something in the man's hand, man. Make him can feel good about himself, yeah? And that's why they have to go and play for the other churches. I know it. A lot of my friends, not this morning, Reverend Bob called me, you know. <laughs> and he might give me a three bills for an hour. Little. Can't force the man. The man got to live. It was a skill. They were trained in this thing. Yeah? Please read now on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, uh -huh. he would raise the twisted horn and press his lips mm. to the golden mouthpiece, yes. draw an enormous breath of air, and begin to blow. Mercy. The haunting sound of the horn would pierce through the Temple Mount, mm. stirring the hearts of the faithful in dire need of repentance. Mm. And even today, you go on YouTube, when you hear a ram's horn blow, it, it, it almost evokes an animal just like it's a suffering. You can feel the vibration when the ram's horn is blown. It does something to the whole being. It does. Right? So, it was called for repentance. And we're going to unpack all of this, right? It was also used, as, used once in the declaration of Israel's sins. Cry aloud. Spear not. Lift up thy voice like a, and do what? Show the house of people, my people, their transgression, and the house of Israel there. Look what she says now. Good book. She says now. Please read now. Three times. Three times the shofar would sound, 
followed by the blast of silver trumpets blown by two attendant priests. Yes. The sound of those trumpets was a mere echo of the mournful call of the ram's horn. Mm. The shofar typically called Israel to attention, yes. to fear and trembling, yes. to rejoice in. Uh -huh. But at the Feast of Trumpets, Woo! the sound of the shofar beckoned the people with a message unlike any other. Stop that. So there was one note that was reserved for one particular day, the Feast of Trumpets. When that was blown, every Jew knew he had 10 days to get himself together for the Day of Atonement. And they knew that. And, they, and friends, I'm telling you, the reason why we are in the condition we are as a people is because we have not heard the trumpets. If you, if you knew that trumpet and where we are today, there'll be a radical reformation in your life in my life in our life i believe it i believe it please read what she says now about her a message of a sabbath rest yes a holy convocation uh -huh. a time to present special burnt offerings to the lord and a time to put, put away, away sin. sin to put away sin lastly it was a reminder to the jewish people that God is sovereign. And him run things run yourself. Him is the Dan Dada. Yeah? He's the Dan of all Dan's. Yeah? In our modern day vernacular. And he will have his final way. He was sovereign. When I was in England, I had the privilege of, we had a day off. And my guide took me to um, William Cooper's house. He was England's last great poet in Southampton. His three-story house, immaculately kept. He was an abolitionist. Uh, also with John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace. And I'm telling you something, man. Uh, when you're in the house, you see his bed. It's just amazing. He was England's last great poet. And he wrote many wonderful hymns. But one of his most beloved is God moves in mysterious ways. And the first stanza speaks of God's sovereignness. It says, God moves in a mysterious ways. His what? His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Now, I left this little bit out because it couldn't fit in your study guide. Please read now, despite the distinction... Despite the distinct differences, after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, Watch it now. the distinction between the shofar and the trumpet, and the trumpet was partially lost. So after 70 AD now, it faded out. Look what happened now. Please read now. Originally, there were two, originally two silver trumpets were blown. They were later replaced by the shofar. And you ever wondered why today the Jews don't use the trumpets? They use the shofar. They do. I don't know why, but after 70 AD, you know that God gave them up in 34 AD. So all that stuff was lost. So they went off in their own thing. But it shows to the fact that even after 34 AD, the, G the Jews still use the trumpets. Now, this is the Arch of Titus in Rome, Italy. This is historical. It, it pictures and portrays Titus looting Jerusalem. Carrying off all the vessels. But there's, and look at one of the instruments that was captured by the historians. See right here? You see that? You see the candlesticks? Even up until 70 AD, it was still used in Jerusalem. So what we're studying is not something we just got, got off the, the, the conflicts box. This is real, brothers and sisters, right? Here it is. Please read now. The Arch of Titus. The silver trumpets were shown in the Arch of Titus. Right here. Located in Rome, Italy. As part of the temple treasures that were looted after the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. Wow. As and predicted by Jesus, the Messiah. In Matthew 24, 1 and 2, right? And then when, it, when this was restored, you know, recolored, what do we see here? The trumpets. A very integral part in the history of Israel, and it should be in our movements. 
what we owe to William Miller, Josiah Litch, Manuel Lukanza, Rabbi Ben Ezra, posterity will never know. Those were the men whom God uses, used to fulfill the anti-type of the Feast of Trumpet. Now, as I said, we're going to look at four areas of the trumpet. When it blew, it called the people, one, to worship. You see all this celebration stuff? And this dead stuff? It got to go. It called the people to a right correction of worship. And Jesus says a time is coming, don't worry, that his true believers will worship him in spirit, not in noise. Call for worship. It also called to work. Yeah. I'm going to show you that. It was, it was also a call to war. It meant that danger is coming. Get ready. And because they were scattered, it called for a regathering. We're going to break those down, the trumpets. And all of that was fulfilled in the Millerite movement. I'm going to show you, right? As we close now. Now, what wind instrument was used when Jesus began his priestly ministry in 3180? Friends, it is amazing. At his inauguration, when he was be beginning his priestly ministry, David captures this. Psalms 47, 1 through 5. David says now, to the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord the Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under his feet. Look at verse 5 now. And he shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah. God is gone where? Who is this? Jesus. He's God. He's gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a what? Trumpet. And some versions say the shofar. Some versions say the ram's horn. His ascension at when he fulfilled the feast of unleavened uh, first fruits. Remember, he rose Sunday morning, went to heaven, came back. He spent 40 days when he brought the trophies to fulfill the first fruits. Yeah? So this was what accompanied him. A sound of a trumpet. And some version says the ram's horn. Well, literally, the point is that the trumpet was there. Right? And angels have trumpets too. They do. Right? No, now, as we close. After Jesus' Messiah, after the, Jesus, the Messiah's death, Burial, resurrection. Please read now. He what? Ascended to heaven a second time uh -huh. to be seated on his throne as king of kings, yes. lord of lords, uh -huh. and our great high priest Woo! amidst the blowing of the shofar and trumpets. Trumpets. Mm. Watch this now. Let us remember now the words of the wise man in scripture. And we're going to We're going to stop here. The thing that hath been, that is past tense, is that which shall be, that is shall be, that is future tense. Yeah? That which is done, present tense, is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing. Turn over now to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 15. You have one. Just put the five beside it, please, in your, in your lesson. He said now, that which hath been is, whoo, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. In other words, the same thing that God expected from his people back then, in the type, he requires of his people in the anti-type. That which he required of ancient Israel when the ram's horn was blowing, are the trumpets he requires of modern Israel and not everybody in the whole Christian of his modern Israel. When we use the word modern Israel, do you know who we speak to? We speak to the commandment people 
of God. Friends, we are not going nowhere without the trumpets. When Jesus shall gather the nation before him at last to appear, then how shall we stand that judgment when someone or sentence to hear? <clears throat> he will gather the wheat in his garner, but the chaff he will scatter away. Then how shall we stand in the judgment of that great resurrection day? Shall we hear from the of the Savior the words, faithful servant, well done? Or tear and with anguish be banished away like we mean it now he will in his garner but the chaff he will scatter away then how shall we stand in that job let us stand please on that great resurrection day he will smile when he looks on his children and see some he sees. He will clothe them in heavenly beauty. He will gather the in his garner, but the chaff he will scatter away. Then how shall we stand in the judgment of that great? Then let us be watching and waiting with burning When the bridegroom shall call to the wedding, oh, he will gather the wheat in his garner, but the chaff he will scatter away. Then how shall we stand in that judgment? In that great resurrection day. O oh God of mercy and compassion, didn't our hearts burn within us this morning as we looked at how integral the trumpets played in Israel's history? Lord, the trumpets have sounded, and we are called to work, to war work, to worship, we are called to regather. I pray this morning, if any man hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. We pray that we will be true to our profession, true to our conviction. So when Jesus comes a second time, when the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. We who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. And so shall we be forevermore. Let all God's people say. Amen. And let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. 